cheese and some things wherever you go. Yeah. But you got to be hungry, more hungry for God. God doesn't make mistakes. I thought about those groceries. It wasn't something for somebody else. It was for me. Amen. God's got you in mind. And he doesn't get up in the morning. He's up all the time. Amen. We're living in the timing of heaven. In the sounds of heaven. In the sounds of who he is. Hallelujah. And there's a river. And the streams thereof make glad. God's working in many, many ways. And I saw that. I saw that God was stretching the cords of my tent. And it wasn't four, honey. They were pulling from me from every area of my body. Where God was stretching me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yep. You might say, well, Lord, I don't have time to fix this. Don't worry, honey. He's got a fixer. He's the fixer-upper. He'll take care of it. But he's wanting to fix what will cause us to operate for him. I want you to lift your hands. We're going to sing a little bit more for the Lord. Let's open up. We're going to pour out our soul into him. That's why you'll see his glory manifested. That's where he shows himself when we pour our soul out to him. How many want to see visions all day long? Just pour your soul out to him. Pour your soul out. Come on, I'm talking to you. Pour your soul out to him. God, I got to have you. I got to know more about you. I got to know what this means. I want to know about these moments of eternity. I want to know what you're doing in me is for eternity. I want to pour myself out. When he gives you his vision, it's the unfolding of the heavens, of the mysteries that's in the heavens. Sharon, put your hands up. We were, Just put your hand up, Sharon. We went out to eat. We didn't plan it. She was there last Friday, and I, I sent a message to her. I said, don't go. She had to wait a while. I said, I want to go out to eat. I just, I just felt to do it. So I get out and she said, no, we're going to pay for it. I said, you didn't invite me. I invited you. I invited you. I told you I was going to pay for it. So while she was there, she said, I just had a vision. Was it the Lord was it, or an angel was standing? Speak a little louder. It was a spiritual spirit. I'll say it that way. Okay. She said as she heard these words, I have healed her and she doesn't know it. Oh, I said, well, I better find out what he's talking about. Because I've been healing in stages. Anybody know what I'm saying? Well, Lord, I got this and this. Don't use that as a reasoning for not doing something for God. It won't work. They were healed as they went. So I thought my first priority was to be healed of the diabetes. Yes. 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 Okay. I had to take that stuff with me to Israel. You don't know what it was a job to get it there. Yes. So I just stopped taking the insulin. And I get up every morning and I've got new feeling in my feet. In my legs. Yes. Come on! There's going to be miraculous miracles that God is going to do for people. Are you listening to me? Miraculous miracles. He's going to put more angels on duty to watch over you, to take care of you, and to take care of situations. I bought this pound of coffee a year ago. I thought, am I ever going to use it up? It won't be any good. And I think I'm at the bottom of the bag, and there's more coffee. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker. I was going to give it to somebody. And I thought, I'm going to throw this bag away. This was three months ago. And there's more coffee down in the bottom. That means I don't have to go to the store in case company comes. I just bought a coffee pot for a company, not for me. 
But she just saw like a spirit say she's healed. And she doesn't know it. I thought, keep talking. <laughs> How many more healings are there? How many more? What else does he want to say? Do you understand? I just don't want to hear one word. God's got a whole diagram of things he wants to say. Do we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying? he's doing in us is for eternity. I just will tell you this. I'm, I'm just going to be open. Just close your eyes and then I'm going to see what you think when I tell you this. Anyway, I've said, Lord, I'm getting old. I guess you, you already know that. I don't have to tell you that. Couldn't we have done this when I was a little younger? I need you to put some youth on me. That's what I said to him. Put some youth on me. He said he's going to beautify the meek with holiness. And I'm sitting at the table, and he begins to sing a love song to me. And I'm kind of humming it. I thought, oh, you're talking to me. You're singing to me. Well, I'm crying all over my kitchen table and all over the chair and all over the stove. I'm just crying. He's telling me how beautiful I am. I thought, I'm going to look in the mirror. Come on. He wants to sing love songs. He wants to tell you mysteries of how you were beautifully formed. He said, you're wonderfully. You know what it says that before in the end? It says, I will praise him because I am. Say it. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Say it. Fearfully and wonderfully. Fearfully. Fearfully. Don't get plastic surgery. It's plastic. Let him work on the heart. You'll be in your world. Now listen. The living creatures. Here's what it says. It was the wheel in the middle of the wheel. They didn't go sideways or fall backwards, but they all went straight forward, but they could see everything around them all the time. The glory of the Lord that was being formed. Jim is separated from his wife being here. Do you think that's easy? It's a holy calling of the glory and the knowledge of the Lord. And how it wants to be revealed. It's just not knowledge, honey. It's revelation knowledge. And in revelation knowledge, he's manifested. He wants, when he says something, he, it's just not a word. He wants it to be manifested. Manifested of who he is. It's not the money. you got to stop worrying about money. How this is going to be taken care of. Listen, he'll wake up those that have it to come and give it to those that have not. Amen. He said, I'll take it from those that have not what? The anointing, the glory of the Lord on their life, and give it to those that have the glory. And I will take care of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a friend that he went to a revival. And before he got there, they'd already had a revival. And he thought he'd taken all this money just to get there. All that he had. To get there. So he was hoping an offering would come that he could, you know, get back home. And so he said to the pastor, he said, well, we've, the glory already fell. They've driven almost a thousand miles. He said, well, could I just have one meeting? You know, I need an offering to get home. He said, no, I, I, I don't have anything for you. He said, well, they had enough money to feed him and his wife and his children to get back to Bakersville. But on the way, the water pump went out. And they're on the side of the road in the heat, not knowing what to do. And he said, suddenly a big Cadillac pulled up behind them. And a man gets out in a white tuxedo. True story. And he walks up to him. He said, hey, he said, what's happening? Did your water pump go out? He said, I didn't know what had happened. 
But the man said, let's, let's lift up the hood and see what it is. And it was a waterfall. He said, well, let's go to the, to the local automotive dealer and let's get what you need. He said, and he reached into his pocket and he pulled out a handful of $100 bills. He said, you know, I really wanted to knock him in the head and get what I needed and go home. <laughs> so he's going to leave his wife and his children in the car. And he said, don't leave them. He said, get in my car and we'll go down and get in. And so the man goes in and orders everything because he didn't know what he needed. And a freeze even to all the wrenches, 5 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths, whatever. I don't know all the dimensions. He said he still has them. And they go back up the road, and the man tells him how to fix his car. He said, and when he got through, he reached into his pocket again, and he pulled out those $100 bills, and he said, the father says to thank you, and gave him four $100 bills. It was an angel. Yes. And the angel said, to t he said this, and he says, to tell you, your next revival will be in this city, and this is the person that you're to meet, and they're going to take care of him. Gave him the name of the person. And when the revival was going to be in the church it was going to be in, and he said he's looking at the money, and he looked for the man, and he's gone. The car is gone also. It was an angel. He'd come and put the, the water pump back in the car. We're going to have encounters with the Lord. Yes. Like we've never had before. This move is going to be a move of his glory. Hallelujah. A move of his glory. Thank you, Lord. A move of how he wants it. And he has a remnant of people that will move with him. Not everybody's going to know what that move is. They'll only have it in part. They'll have it what they have time for but not for how God wants it. Do you know I hardly ever set a clock to get up? I don't even need a clock. I just tell the Lord what time I want to get up. Because we live in the timing of the heavens and none of the earthly. The song this morning was since I've laid my burdens down. You have to lay everything down that's important. It's not our mothers, our brothers, our sisters. It's what God is doing in each one of us. And God has chosen everyone in this room. If you notice, we're not teenagers. We're not under 30. Hardly under 50. <laughs> Pastor Maiden says, you're not really worth it. They can take you at least 65 until you can drive 65 miles an hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've learned a little bit. But I'm going to give you a few pointers, but I, I just want you to build yourself up inside. Build yourself up. Build yourself up. Let that glory come. Let the majesty of the throne come into this room. This is what I'm talking about. The majesty of what's around the throne. The majesty. I had a vision the other day of the Lamb coming out of the throne. Oh. It wasn't anything like I had ever seen. The colors I've never seen before. The colors of his love. The colors of the rainbow. Coming out of the throne. It's in the presence of Jehovah. That we are changed. I'm in Arizona because I'm in North Dakota. He's on the sides of the north, you know. <laughs> That's right. I'm in North Dakota, and before I left my home in Virginia, the Lord said to me, you will go on this trip with Ruth Heflin, but you will not stay. Come on, it's good to hear these things. It's good. You understand, it's good to hear the next steps. Yeah. I'm fine when I leave, but on the way, an irritant got in my body. Kidney stones started to bother me. You ever had a kidney stone? Yes. Anybody ever had a baby? It's worse than having a baby. It's worse. Yep. All the way across America in the car. 
after, rather after we got on the airplane, we had to drive quite some distance. And the Lord said, I want you to take the Lewis and Clark Trail. Oh, yeah. God remembered Lewis and Clark. And I'm saying to Sister Ruth while she's driving, the Lord said, don't forget the Lewis and Clark Trail. She said, we're on it right now. And we get to, what's the name of the town? Fargo. Was it Fargo? Yeah, Fargo. We get to the church, and Sister Ruth pushes me out on the platform. Oh, I used to want to kill her in every sentence. <laughs> now, I, I don't mean really murder her. I mean, <laughs> don't do this to me. God's going to do this, and he's going to operate in areas that you've never been operating for. He wants us to get well, that we can come out of the well. Come on. God wants you to bring it out of the well. She said, give a little testimony first. Man, I haven't heard anything. The Lord, I haven't heard anything all day long. I haven't even heard a song. And I heard this song as I got up out of the chair. Remember the Red River Valley. What has that got to do with the Spirit? That's right, Richie. Come on, accommodate me here. Remember the... That's not very spiritual. Come on, I want something more lively. I said, well, all I'm hearing is the Red River Valley, and everybody started talking at one time. They were saying, this is the Red River Valley. Yes. I thought, now where am I going with this word? <laughs> this is the key to the whole service. Yes. What is Sister Ruth going to preach on? I don't know. What is she going to do to me next? Oh, Lord, she's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't complain. I never complained to her. Never. Never told her my viewpoint or what I thought. But she could tell, boy, she could tell. The water was rising. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do with this Red River Valley? Hallelujah. Was it that day or the next day? It rained. The flood banks overflowed. The church service didn't continue. I think we had church service that night, didn't we? A couple of days. Ruth preached. It was about, what, 2,000 people in that church. She pushed me out to the front. I was going to push you out on the edge. You better get ready. Are you ready to keep your balance? Get yourself strong. He's going to provide. He's going to give the answers at the minutes that you needed. And all of a sudden, the floods came, and they were, everybody was into the sandbags. Everybody was banking everything up with sandbags. And the Lord spoke to the pastor's wife. He said, it shall not come into your church because you have taken care of the poor. That's right. Come on. That's good. Every little thing that you do for the Lord, account it. Pliable for what he wants to do in the future. Now listen, you've got to get to the point where it's not a sacrifice or a drudgery. If you'll see the living creatures, it has the eagle and the man on one side, and it has the oxen I'm sorry, it has the lion and the man on one side and the eagle and the oxen on the other. Until we become a servant, the spirit cannot work. Everything in that Bible is for a reason. He's got a blueprint in it, wanting to know what we're made of, who we are. Ezekiel is the book today. Ezekiel in the book of Revelation. Just read it. Get in the spirit. And the water, I think, came up to the doorstep of the church and didn't come into the church. Yes, are you listening to me? Didn't come into the church. And all I heard was, remember the Red River Valley. God wants you to remember, remember that some of these places, these valleys, these valleys of Baca that you've got to go through, these hard places you have to go through, he's working the eternal purposes of who he is. If we had not gone out to eat, I would not have heard, the Lord says you're healed. Do you understand what I'm saying? I wouldn't be standing here. Do you know how wonderful it is not to take insulin? I've been taking it for 10 years. It is wonderful. Hallelujah! And I've been stopping a day here and two days there, and I thought, I'm just not going to take it. And I know all of you have been praying. You yes. tell me you've been praying. I get all these texts. We're praying. We're yes. praying. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying. We're praying. God's going to put you out on the ledge and he's going to give you a revelation 
Lord, what does this mean? What does this mean? He wants you to search out the mysteries of what is hidden. It's behind a glass door and we see through a glass darkly. But you learn a lot by prophecy. A lot of people don't know that. We learn to see and hear by prophecy. And that's why the scripture says, all they prophesy. Many people don't understand that. God wants us to announce the hidden things of God in the service. You might have just have a flash vision and you don't know what it is. Now remember I told you, Ruth said, in many days she saw at least 200 visions. I mean, when did you have time to see anything else? She said it was just flash like lightning of the movements of God and what he's doing. That will keep you busy. Come on. We won't say we don't have anything to do. There's a lot to do. You might have a little dream in the night, just a little. While we were in Israel, Arlene was telling me that she saw something about Phoenix. Remember, she said you didn't get the first part and you didn't get the last part, but it was something about eight years in Phoenix. Do you remember that? But you, you're to seek the Lord until he tells you what he meant by the eight years. Now, eight is the number of new beginning. I had a dream the other night that I was in North Carolina making spaghetti. Evidently, I'm going to get an invitation to come to North Carolina. But I know how to make spaghetti. I mean, is that a spiritual dream? That's not a pizza dream. It's a spaghetti dream. Mm -hmm. And I might not know what it is until I get there and somebody says, would you like to cook a meal? There it is. It's the vision. God does that. He doesn't give you some lofty something that you think, what in the world is this all about? We're not in the book of Revelations chapter 13. That is for the world after we go. We are living in the now of what God is doing and what we can do. And now he operates in our spirit with the anointing that is upon our lives. He'll be used to simple things that you have upon your lives. The government that he's put upon you to win some, to bless some. Hallelujah. We used to sing that song. I've seen the lightning flash thee. I heard the thunders roar. I felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Then I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. How many remember that? No, never alone. Never. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Never. He's always there. It's like it's in the shadows. And he's looking around the shadows to see how we're responding to him. All day long, he looks to see how we respond. Did we nod at that person? Did we respond at that person? Did we make room for that person? Did we give that person the parking place? Did we get upset at that person when they got ahead of us? Did they run the red light? <laughs> All day long, he's building us up. Tempering. Hallelujah. Tempering. Think about that. If I hadn't gone out to eat, I might not be healed today. You have to make a little investment. How many know what I'm talking about? You got to make the investment. It'll always be less of what God is going to do. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Because lift your heads, O ye gates, the King of glory is coming in. We hear that song all the time. When Ruth Heflin used to come and preach, she looked like a cloud coming. Come on. The Bible says there are clouds without water. God wants the rain in us. He wants us to be a rainmaker. Get the heavens open. That the Spirit of God can come down can pour upon the people, can bless the church. Are you hearing you know what I'm saying? Yes. Can bring a move into the church. Yes. I'm tired of going through the revolving door. You go out and come in, and I don't come out with my heart burning inside of me. You remember the two on the road to Emmaus? Their hearts were burning inside of them because they had met the Master. Yes. 
Man, I had an encounter today. I had an encounter this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. Wendy, I just had a vision as I was saying that. The Lord's going to come to you in many faces, in many ways, and you're going to say, I've had a strange encounter. I had this strange thing to happen to me. It's like you're going to be somewhere else and not here. God's going to, God's going to carry your spirit away into the unknown, into the reality of who he is, the workings of miracles. That's right. You're not alone. Sometimes you felt alone. It's like God has separated you from your family. Separated you from different people. You understand? He's moved you here and he's moved you there. So there's no certain dwelling place. But it's in the rest, the R-E-S-T of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me some rest music. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the Kalabanda. Brother, I don't know who you are right here. You. I don't know who you are, but the Lord says to tell you there's no distance in him. No distance in him. He wants you to reach out. Just reach out to him. Reach out. Let your faith reach out to him. He's going to bring some things close to you. You're going to have some encounters with the Lord that you have not had. Do you speak in tongues? Sing in tongues. Let a rumor get on your voice. Just sing and bellow it out to the Lord. Be that great baritone in the shower. Hallelujah. Whatever you're doing, let it come out of you. Sing a song unto the Lord. But I just saw that. I saw things coming together. I saw pieces of the puzzle. I don't know what the puzzle is. You can receive it too behind me. Listen, whoever hears, but I saw it over you. What, what is your name? Ed. Ken? Ed. Ed. I saw that. There was no distance. I just saw things coming very close. Understanding coming into the moves, whoa, into the will. There's some shiftings in the spirit. The Lord told us when we, we just went to Israel, there were 18, started out with 30 people and they got down to 18. Pastor Maiden didn't know that it was all women. We had several men that couldn't go. And he, he, he started to, I, went, I said, I want to tell you we're going to Israel in case you didn't know it. He said, yeah, I see it. just a group of women, no men going. I mean, that was his opening words in the prophecy. But here's what he said. The Lord said, when you go to Israel, it's going to bring a shift and it's going to bring a change. And when we were in Israel, I got up one morning and I heard the word, the Philistines are dead. That was the day that, who was the prime minister, I guess you called him, of Iran, the president, and his cabinet members. They were all killed. I heard it. I went down to breakfast and I told all the people. Nobody got excited, but you remember I said that? I said, you know what the Lord said to me this morning? The Philistines are dead. I mean, I didn't know what he was saying, but I declared what he said. But he said before we left, he said, because you're willing to go and be a sacrifice. He said, I'm going to bring a shift in the nation. Let him order your steps. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, he wants to open the heavens and give visions. Yes. Give answers this morning. Yes. Give answers. He is so beautiful. Yes. Just look upon him. He is so beautiful. Heaven's diadem. Richard, bring me down another. It's too high. He is so beautiful. Just look upon him. He is so beautiful. Heaven's diadem. He is so beautiful. Behold him and see the beauty of. Heaven's majesty. He is so beautiful. Just wait up on him. He is so beautiful. Behold him and see. 
see the beauty of Jesus. He's working his majesty. It's his majesty that's coming into the earth. The wealth and the worth of the movements of the heavenly ways of that the glory can be revealed. We had a meeting one night in our camp. There was so much anointing there, it was scary. Do you know what I'm saying? It was scary, brother. Anything could have happened. Ruth began to call out people's callings. It just wasn't one country. There was a half a dozen or, ten, or eight countries that people, she just told them. She said, I see this over you. I see this over you. She called one lady out. She said, you're trying to make it too perfect. Just let God work. Let him work his will. How many feel like you're displaced? Just be honest. Am I the only one? I mean, sometimes you feel like you're alone, but you're not alone. You, you get lonely because I like company. I like to talk to people. I don't like to talk to the walls, but sometimes God will put you alone so you'll spend more time with Him. Yes. But I like having somebody in the house because the Bible talks about what two can do. Now, two can comfort one another and warm one another. One can do what the other one lacks. And he said about two by two. Because you're accountable for one another. Hallelujah. But I want you to feel the living creatures working. He wants you to know the origin of what is happening in these days. And be people, listen to me, please. We are not going to be people that are frolicking around in the water. We're going to be people carried by the movements of God. Mm -hmm. Accomplishments in the spirit realm. No. That the spirit and the well-being of God is working everywhere. Glory to God. We went to Israel. It was hot there. Was it hot? It, was, it would be cool one day and hot the next. I said, yeah, that's the church, hot and cold. I mean, I just equated what was going on. It was hard climbing on that bus for me because I had to reach up and pull myself in. But I didn't complain. People went to help me. I said, I don't want you help. I'm going to do this. Don't baby me. I can't stand it. <laughs> that's right. Hallelujah. Caleb said, I feel like I'm 45 and 86, 85. I feel half my age. That means there's a weight of glory upon you and me. How many want to feel that weight? That weight. That movement of God. There is a revelation that's in the spirit that God wants us to open up to, to see a measure and the magnitude of who he is until it's not the same old, same old. And you can't wait to get together with people of the same mind or the same spirit. The fire of the Lord is getting ready to move into the earth. It's going to consume consume a lot of things that are not of God. Don't be upset. He will provide what you have been able to get in an unusual way. Or it won't even be necessary to have it. He's going to work miracles in ways that you have not experienced before. How many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you understand what I'm talking about? I've been downsizing. I've been hauling stuff out. I don't need this and I don't need that. I got a collection of books on Israel. I don't want to give away, but I am. 
I mean, it's got revelation in it. But I want to say this. We can hear a sermon, and we want to get online to hear it, but it's already old by the time you hear it because God's doing something new. Yeah. It's something new. It's the dynamics of God. There's an intricacy of the knowledge of God. Hidden things that we might know Him. Sister Ruth said she was listening to this tape. This is when they had tapes. But she said she was in the message before the person preached what they were preaching. She knew what was going to happen in, in the next few lines of the message. Just knowing. Do you understand? Just knowing. You've got to get a searchlight on inside of you. Lord, I don't care. I said to the Lord before I came out here, I don't care where it is, how you're doing it, and who you're doing it with, but I want to be in the middle of it. I said this to the Lord in 1998, 97. And he immediately said to me, Phoenix, just like that. Come on. But I'm already in North Dakota, in Fargo, when he had already introduced me to Phoenix, but he didn't tell me it was Phoenix. Remember I said I got sick and they were going to send me back home there and put me on a plane. But the Lord had already told me before I left. A lady came running up to me and she said, I didn't know you were going anywhere. Let me pray for you before you go. The Lord said, you will go, but you'll return before they will. You won't stay with them. I mean, th these people had the mind of the Lord. And suddenly I, I was got very ill and it was carrying a fever of 106. And I didn't run to the doctor. I'm not dead yet. Sister Ruth said, do you think you could leave the music one more night? I thought, man, I can't even see you. I got such a fever. But I said, yes. And she put me on the platform to leave the music. And the back door opened, and the Lord come riding in on the white stallion. There were two doors that opened in the church. We were at two or three places in Fargo. Come riding down the aisle, and I'm on a high platform. So the nose of the horse came up to the, where the podium was. Come on, you got to get real with this thing. And he had blue turquoise all over him. And it was very significant when I looked at the turquoise. I didn't know. I thought, this is important. Why is he showing me? It was down on the, he had a piece of it on the chain down his forehead. And it was in the stirrups. I could just see the turquoise. And the thought came to me, where do you find turquoise? In Arizona. And the Lord said, will you ride with me? Come on. Hallelujah. Well, of course you say yes. Man, to get on the horse, get on the horse with the Lord. I don't care where he's going, just get on the horse. <laughs> and I came out of the vision. It was gone. And then I came on back home. And that's when... I, I actually prayed, Lord, I don't care where it is and what you're doing. And he said, Phoenix, in two minutes, the phone rang. I'm up in my boat. Down at, we had a phone room where we had the phone and the refrigerator and the, you know, the ironing board for people. It's the only special guest stayed up there. But I had a room up there. And I heard him say, Phoenix, and the phone rang in two minutes. How would you like to go to Phoenix? Come on. God's going to cut through the time. You better be ready. You better know how to pack that suitcase. You better have to know to get to that airport. Come on. Be ready. Be in a moment. Don't be in any delays because God doesn't have time for delays. He said, Phoenix. Be willing. And then in another 10 minutes, maybe an hour, somebody called me and said, I would like to go to Phoenix. I, thought, I didn't tell her I'd already heard. I said, well, what do you have in mind? She said, I've got some land out there that somebody wants to buy. And I haven't been out there in 30 years. But I need somebody to go out and look at it and see how it is. And if there's any centers on it. I thought, well, I don't know. It's way up in some mountain called Sholo. White mountain somewhere. I said, well, I don't know. I wasn't that adventurous in 15. 
And at the same time, Ruth a, has a call. She comes to Phoenix. And I thought I'd make it all one day, but it didn't work that way. We came out, and we came out again. And I went up and looked at the land. Well, she never did sell it. She gave it to me. It was worth $25,000. I sold it for fifteen because it wouldn't perk. But it was $15,000 I didn't have. You see how God poured all that in me to help me so I could come to Phoenix, Arizona. He's got everything working out for you. He's got all the right things, the dynamics in place. Don't worry about what you need. God will have the clothes you to wear when you get there. You have to go with just a little. Don't lay yourself down with heavy suitcases and a lot of stuff. He'll beautify you as you go. Hallelujah. And I came back home and packed my stuff and came out here. And I thought I was only going to stay a while because I like green stuff. I thought, he'll, he'll get me out of here in six years. I like green flowers, green apples, you know, green grass. He didn't do it. I saw everybody else leaving, everybody was joining themselves. He didn't take me. I thought, well, it's hot out here. It's getting hotter. More people are coming out here. It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Now listen to this quickly, and then we're going to something else. We won't be here forever. I thought my time was about up. And I go to church Sunday morning and pastor preaches a message. But before I got to church, I got up early and I thought, I need to read some in the Bible. And all my Bibles were in the car that I wanted to read. Three of them got in my car. So I went out in the car and I got the Bible and brought it in for 20 minutes and read it. I said, I'm going to read to wherever it opens. And it opened to Ecclesiastics, and he preached from Ecclesiastics. Exactly what I've read. You know what he preached? The latter shall be greater than the beginning. That's my answer. Come on, I didn't have to fast 30 days and wait for a windfall. The latter shall be greater than the beginning. You've got to know in your labors, your efforts. You're going out like the servant of Elisha. Where's the cloud? He sent him out seven times. He said, go look again. Go look again. Go look again. He said, I see a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. He said, I span the heavens with my hands. Come on. It's a little thing for God to do it. You just keep on doing what pleases him. Don't be off on some yokel somewhere. Oh, I need to take a little vacation. Sister Ruth said, I'm watching her. And one day, two people called her and said, how would you like to go here for two days on a little vacation? She said, no, thank you. And then she got another call. How would you like to come to Georgia for a couple of days? And here's what she said. I've never taken a vacation in all the years that I have preached. I hope everybody's hearing this. Why should I start now? You're going to take a vacation in heaven. A long one. You get excited about what you're doing because it's unto the Lord. Have you got that? Everything. I haven't had any pain since I've been sitting here. I got this chair and I haven't had any pain. No pain, no gain. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now remember that. He's got the oxen and the eagle on one side. You got to be a servant before you can move in the things of the Spirit. Right. I'm asking somebody the other day about the music in their church. I said, How is it? And they said, They said, oh, it's good. It's not good, but I didn't want to tell them that. It's lousy. It couldn't bring a bird in. Yeah. I'm talking to you. You find that place where the eagle's wings are moving, where the living creatures are moving, where the spirit of the Lord is moving. I was tired Friday. I didn't really want to go out and eat. I wanted to go home. 
But I knew the quest of the Lord was to go out to eat. And I got my miracle. That calling is right around the corner. Some of you have got to know this. I just want to read a little something to you. Richard, just play softly for me. I want you to turn. You know where Ezekiel is? It's after Lamentations and Jeremiah. Learn all the books of the Bible. I'll use it somewhere. This is the call and the commissionings through his circumstances. His vision of God. He said, I looked and behold, you got to look. And he saw the whirlwind. Did you know this whole country is in a whirlwind right now? Ezekiel 1, verse 4. And out of the north a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the mist thereof as the color of amber, as the color of those eyes of those horses, the color of amber, like fire. It was like a fire. And out of the mist, until there's a little fire, came four living creatures. The way that God wants to do it. The way that he wants to do it. There will never be a perfect circumstances for you to work in. Never. It never is. It's his ways. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of Christ. Oh, what's happening, sister? Well... We had a little fire and this got lost and the wind came and there was a hurricane, then a tornado. Oh, the business of the Lord is moving. And everyone had four faces and everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brash. And they had the hands of a man under their wings. Under their four sides and the four had their faces and their wings. When you read this, it's like who can make sense of what Ezekiel has written? But he had an expansion in his mind of the spirit. When I read this, I thought somebody certainly was mixed up when they wrote this. Their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings on everyone was joined one to another. And two covered their bodies. Sister Ruth said that when she had her first encounter of the living creature, she had gone to Israel for a visit and she got an invitation from Goldie May Ears advisor. Now that's going back in some time. For her to come and live in Israel. And she said, I don't have time to live in Israel. I'm too busy. She came home came home late and went to bed and the living creatures came into her room that night. And from that night, she saw the unfolding of the heavens, of the fire of the Lord, of the understanding of the mysteries of God. And she did a whole album on the living creatures. God just doesn't want, she wrote eight books before she died and was going into nine or ten more. I'm talking about eight books on the glory. Who do you know that's written at least five books on one subject? There's no end to who God is and what he can do. And she knew that for the rest of her life, she would pour herself out to the nations, to the people. Unless we have a love for people, we cannot be a servant. Right. You can't do it. You can't give. You can't sacrifice. You can't give up the things that are precious. Hallelujah. It's 
letting go of those things that are precious that opens the door of the kingdom and the things that are eternal. Hallelujah. We feel safety in having more and it's not. It's having less where there's more. It's having less where there's more. And the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, like the appearance of lamps. I wish you could have seen those stallions. They turned their eyes. They kept rising up out of the earth. They turned their eyes. Brother Jim, when I told him, he said he called his wife. Did you tell the people? Tell the rest of them quickly what you told them. I told him the vision. The, uh, I was at AJ's shopping. I just got in town. And um, I shared about the vision. It had just been about a half hour, 45 minutes on the phone with Ruth. And I walked into AJ's and I called my wife to tell her about the vision, about the stallions, with fire in her eyes. And the glory of God. He had like a 12 foot parameter around me and just went Phew. and I started to weep at Ajax. This is an out this is a time of the, of the glory of God sitting on earth, sitting in this region right here right now. She, she, you know and Ruth is a forerunner of what Father's about to do with everybody. When the children of Israel come up out of Egypt there was not one feeble one amongst them. How much more now with the body of Christ? It's like a wave of glory is going to sweep in every place that's open and every person healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Uh, like your Father, everything is broken, fixed. Anything where there's lack, everything being supplied. The Father, there's such great favor on the church right now. Yeah. And it's like you just just receive. You're, you, you couldn't do anything to earn the grace. It's a matter of receiving and believing by faith. And the gift has been given. And now the church is going to see a manifestation of the fullness of Father's grace coming on the nation. Coming on, in, and to me it all starts in Phoenix. You know, I don't know if you're aware of it, but Chuck Pearson, Dutch Chief, when they travel, they said that the government of God for America has been was an apostolic government coming out of North Dakota. And see, you're from North Dakota. I mean, you came through and you got an assignment out of North Dakota. I was born and raised in North Dakota. The Red River is like the Nile. It runs north. I was brought up being taught the Red River Valley is the breadbasket of the world. But there's an app for you. I was driving my truck in, in 19. Where I said, I want you to go to Phoenix. I'm about to do an app for you greater than anything's ever been seen anywhere in America. And I want you to be a part of it and go finish what we started in 2009, which I did six months of meetings down here. This is a, this is a timeline. You know, I just left for about three weeks or a month. And, and I'm contemplating being here in the winter. I mean, in the summer when it's so hot, and the Lord's like, I do revival in the heat. Amen. Yeah. I do revival in the heat. And then when I get off the plane yesterday, I get my feet on the ground. And the Lord speaks to me and says, Welcome home. There's an outpouring, and I want to be in the center of it. And I know the plan and the purposes of God. And everybody that's hungry is going to start to have this, this incredible drawing on your hearts. It's like, I can't get in enough. But as you just step in those directions, you're going to have encounters of God, and everything in your life falls into the in the harmony and oneness with the Father. And His power and His ability is going to be displayed. So this is a time to keep your eyes looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Get a foundation in you to support what He's about to do. Mm -hmm. She's a forerunner. The visions that she sees, you guys are going to be to begin to step into that place. It's like this is a taste of fullness. And you and I are going to come into that place as we just sit under and as you receive a gift as such as Sister Ruth. The gifting that's in her is going to get activated in all of you. If you can see it, you can have it and you believe it. And you have to see it by faith. 
And so sometimes you get a little stretched in the midst of all of this. And it's like, and you, and your carnality wants to go, ah, but, but you have to come to a place where you increase your word time so you can see more. Because as you can see, you can have. And it's released into your life. So this is a hope. This is a timeline. A phoenix. These next few months are, are so crucial. Yes. This is the timeline. This is a melting pot for America. America is going to get so lit, greater than any revival, is it? greater than Azusa Street, greater than, than the stuff that happened on the East Coast, and everything that's ever happened in America. Greater is what God is about to do in Phoenix. So just like going to lunch was an obedient act, and all of a sudden, boom, the healing sprung forth. Through your acts of obedience, and not by works, but by grace, but your acts of obedience, you step into a place of where Father can bring it to pass. All your dreams. Amen. 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 I want to say this, you that are listening and watching, I get letters. I had a whole bag of letters. I can't let them go. I mean, there was just revelation nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Jewels and what they've learned by listening and watching and entering in. One sister told me, now listen to this, she must be a grandmother. She said, my children ran out. I've been watching you in praise and worship. I haven't praised like you. And bought me a tambourine and a prayer shawl. And I've been dancing and shouting like you have. And she said, the place I have come into spiritually, my life has been changed. The Bible says the appearance of the wheels and the work was like under the color of pearl. That's fire. They all had one likeness. There's a unity that is coming. Their appearance and their work was if it was a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Wherever they went, they were upon their four sides and they turned not where they went. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful. Awesome. Awesome. Dreadful. You can't describe the work of what God is doing. You just know there are people that know their God. Now, you won't get this overnight. You've got to think on these things. Sometimes when we tell you some of these phenomenal things, you know, we say, well, that's interesting because... For one thing, it's new and we don't know what else to say. Don't say it's not of God because somebody hasn't taught it or you can't find it in the Bible. No, because all the Bibles are today is somebody else's interpretation. Get the Bible where you're going to seek the Spirit and what God is saying. That's why I read the King James Version. Because the Spirit's got to reveal it to you. The Spirit's got to reveal to you the book of Ezekiel. Amen or oh me? Amen. Amen? Look at this. It says, wherever they went, upon their four sides, they turned not as as it went. Wherever the Spirit was to go, they went. We want to follow the Spirit. Follow the cloud. Hallelujah. Remember the woman that we decided to pray for? She said she was so shocked. We need more of those events. I just got up that morning or that night before. I thought we're going to pray for her tomorrow on our program. It's not a program on our service. The whole world's got full of programs. We've got a service. We are servicing the people. Whatever happened to all the good mechanics that knew how to fix a car? No, they got this machine that tells you you need this bolt and this strut. And this piece, and it works a little while, and they get all of your money. I want to be in a service that where I come out of there, honey, something has changed me for the eternal worth of who God is and who I am. This is what I told my doctor the other day. Listen to this. I said, now listen. When people start talking about spiritual things, you know, we want to, oh, puff it. Because it's new to them. 
But we don't say that when they come and give us their diagnosis, do we? Because they've studied. And I said to the doctor, I said, well, I've studied God. And this is what I have found. This is what I have found. You understand? I was lost and now I'm found. This is what I found. This is how God works. And I remember the nurse said to me, special said to me, I told her I was going to Israel. She said, well, you better forget. Here's what she said. We're going over on a prayer watch. She said, you better forget about praying. Wait till I go tell her I'm not taking any of the medicine. Probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah. turn it into the insurance company. Well, I got the assurance. Amen. You understand? Amen. You know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Amen. And do you know they have a whole list of things? Do they have this program now when you go to the doctor? You, you have to take all these examinations every year. Now they want you to get glasses. I don't need glasses over here. No. I don't need a brain x-ray over here. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Yes. We're going to stand up and we're going to be the lion that they saw in the book of Ezekiel. Yeah. We're going to be the man that they saw in the book and the woman they saw in the book of Ezekiel. This is what I believe. I'm in the doctor's office the other day. I gave you my book. This is my, I go for a year, you know, heart doctor. And I said, I want to live my life out in Israel. I said, I just returned. He said, what happened over there? I said, well, while the shooting was over there, we were always over here. And I told him how close we were one day. I thought they were working on the road and they were shooting missiles out of there. He said, oh, Jesus. I heard him say that. He went, oh, Jesus. He called on the name of the Lord. <laughs> he said, well, that's what you believe. And I want him to say, yeah, you believe what you're doctoring on me too, don't you? We're going to stand up and be counted yes. right? to who we are. Yes. Stand up and declare who he is and what he's doing in his life. Yes. Say you believe it. And I'm telling you, all of heaven's going to stand behind you and he's going to work for you. And God is going to bring victories and anointings. Listen to me. And miracles that you have, like you have never seen. Hallelujah. I just want to read you, read you a few accounts that God gave me in the night. And then we're going to just pray and sing for Israel. 